You're watching DW News Asia. Coming up today, the Pandora Papers expose secret holdings by South Asia's elite. A new investigation alleges government officials and celebrities in Pakistan and India have used offshore companies to hide millions. Are these legitimate business dealings or corruption of the highest order? I'm Biresh Panaji. Welcome to DW News Asia. Glad you could join us. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan has promised an investigation into allegations hundreds of Pakistani citizens, including some in government, indulged in financial wrongdoing and corruption. He announced the probe on Twitter after revelations from the so-called Pandora Papers. It's a global investigation by the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists, or ICIJ, that looked at how multinational corporations and rich and influential people hide their wealth in overseas territories and accounts. The papers allege Khan's finance minister was involved in setting up offshore companies. Khan said in his tweet, My over two decades struggle has been premised on the belief that countries are not poor, but corruption causes poverty because money is diverted from being invested in our people. Now, fighting corruption has been a central plank of Imran Khan's government. Some 700 Pakistani citizens have now been named in the Pandora Papers, including many of the country's elite. One of the most prominent named is Finance Minister Shaukat Fayaz Ahmed Tareen. The ICIJ alleges he and his family own four offshore companies. A consultant said these were formed as part of an intended investment into a bank with a Saudi business. A statement from Tarin said, and I quote, the offshore companies mentioned were incorporated as part of the fundraising process for my bank. In just a moment, we'll speak to a journalist in Pakistan associated with the ICIJ investigation. But first, a quick primer on how an offshore company operates. So people who want to keep their money secret first choose from among hundreds of countries and jurisdictions worldwide that have little regulation on foreign-owned accounts or businesses. Then they hire an offshore agent to set up a shell company or trust that handles the money, keeping the identity of the real owner confidential. Owning an offshore company is not necessarily illegal, but this setup makes it difficult for tax collectors and law enforcement to find assets. Umar Chima is an investigative journalist with the News Newspaper of Pakistan. The paper was one of the many global partners in the ICIJ investigation. Uh, Umar, welcome. Firstly, how are people reacting in Pakistan to the revelations in the Pandora Papers? Uh, yeah, uh, the reaction is quite mixed. It depends that uh, who we are asking, the targets are reacting angrily and uh, the other ones, they are very happy that uh, uh, such people and we get to know that uh, uh, what kind of uh, assets they were hiding abroad. So overall, uh, these papers have generated a lot of resonance with the people and uh, that's, uh, I think, a very good thing. And uh, there is uh, more awareness uh, during Panama Papers, uh, people know a little about these offshore structures. Now they are, uh, uh, they, they know a lot about these things and uh, uh, it's uh, a discussion everywhere. But hiding this wealth, as you put it, uh, in offshore companies and trusts, per se, isn't illegal, and you've written about this. And I therefore wonder why we should be concerned with companies owned by Finance Minister Shaukat Fayaz Tarin and his family, for instance. Yeah, first of all, you know, there are many laws which are discriminatory. They, they exist in legal framework, but that doesn't mean that they are perfect. Uh, in case of the offshore, offshore companies, yes, they are legal. Uh, but uh, these structures are uh, massively abused, and that is the reason uh, they have uh, generated a lot of controversy. And uh, uh, the critics are looking at the offshore companies in different angle. Uh, you know, uh, one angle is tax avoidance, that you are uh, earning profit in one country, but you are transferring profit uh, to a low tax jurisdiction only because, uh, you know, you can save your taxes there. So it means that 
uh, where you are earning profit, you are not contributing in the state building, you are not paying taxes there, and uh, inequalities increase because you are uh, maximizing the profit and other people and the government, they are getting poor. Uh, then there is the tax evasion. You are uh, hiding uh, different structures. Uh, you are not, uh, you know, it's a question of lack of information. Unless there is a complete information, you cannot... Uh, the regulators cannot decide about uh, that how the market should operate and even the government sometime uh, these uh, uh, big businesses they ask for the relief and they seek subsidies uh, showing the losses and uh, uh, hiding uh, uh, such structures abroad and we have seen such cases uh, yeah. and then the third one uh, these, uh, you know, uh, for example, in political cases, mostly uh, such structures are potentially abused for, uh, uh, you know, illicit uh, financing, uh, funding, and uh, even uh, for the money laundering purpose. So uh, it's uh, controversial for different reasons. And, uh, uh, you know, that is a structure. Uh, uh, it has a legal standing, but uh, right. uh, uh, potentially it more misuse than uh, positively it's utilized. Right. Uh, Prime Minister Imran Khan promised a Naya Pakistan or a new Pakistan, a corruption-free Pakistan potentially. And then you have his finance minister who shows up in these papers. Do you think that the Imran Khan government is insincere about ridding Pakistan of corruption? Uh, you know, uh, uh, I have a guarded optimism because uh, uh, Prime Minister Imran Khan said, uh, you know, whatever the issue, and uh, he said that uh, he has always demanded this. So right now the issue is uh, these offshore structures. The last time during the Panama Papers, uh, he said that, uh, uh, you know, uh, the corrupt money is uh, hidden abroad through such structures. Later it was found out that uh, Prime Minister had also had one offshore company uh, to buy uh, a property in London, and then he had a different justification for him. Uh, the same uh, goes, uh, you know, uh, in the present situation. Uh, and, you right. know, it's a kind of anomaly that prime, uh, the um, uh, finance minister, he is supposed to, uh, you know, increase the revenue and encourage investment in Pakistan and for his businesses. Uh, he had been uh, using offshore structures. So what this suggests, it means uh, no matter uh, what he speaks uh, uh, about his job and, uh, you know, the kind of thing he is supposed to do, uh, his right. practice is entirely different. And the same, you know, uh, uh, another prime minister's uh, advisor on investment uh, uh, revenue, he resigned recently. Right. His uh, uh, son was also having an offshore company. Umar Chima, we'll leave it there for the time being. But thank you so much for joining us today. Okay, bye. And elites from neighboring India, too, figure on the Pandora Papers list, some 380 of them. The list includes well-known celebrities like actor Jackie Shroff on the left there, cricketing legend Sachin Tendulkar in the middle, and industrialist Anil Ambani, among others. All have been named for having parked assets overseas, at one point or the other. And joining me now is P. Vedyanathan Ayer. He is executive editor in the Indian Express newspaper, which partnered with the ICIJ on the Pandora Papers investigation. Vedyanathan, the Indians named in the Pandora Papers are some of the most famous and well-respected in the country. I mean, Sachin Tendulkar, for example, is worshipped as a god. Have they committed any wrong? See, I think if you look at Sachin's case, you know he has uh, he has taken money out of the country through uh, through probably the you know liberalized remittance scheme uh, under the Reserve Bank of India, uh, which is allowed. You know, at that point of time when this offshore entity was set up by Sachin, he uh, the limit was about two hundred uh, about you know uh, roughly about fifty thousand dollars a year, which has now over a period of time gradually increased to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So, you know, you have to look at, um, we don't know the exact details from the documents, how much he, uh, uh, he, he actually remitted outside the country every year because you know, there are three partners, uh, three, his uh, father-in-law and his wife also there in this company. So we need to find out with those details were not there in the document. So we don't know whether it is legal or illegal, but the fact that he set up an offshore entity is certain uh, at a time when, you know, offshore entities setting it up is not so easy in the sense that it requires 
clearances depending on how much right. you want to take whether you know fema allows you to do so but but is this illegal see i think in 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 india uh taking money out of the country is not illegal you know way back you know in 2003 onwards you know we had a liberalized remittance scheme but india is a capital controlled country you know in on the capital account it doesn't allow full convertibility so there are limits on which you can remit money outside the country so unless we have very de- granular details of how much and uh, uh, how soon or at what duration uh we wouldn't be able to comment on the legality because all data is not available with us right so but but basically the way you are describing it and there's some more than 300 indians named on this list i mean is it a case of india's yeah. poor paying the price of these dealings so you know say if if there is sachin tendulkar at one end of the spectrum in in the panama papers some of the indians who are there whom we'll write about and whom we have written about uh, in the newspaper today it is very clearly obvious that many businessmen are trying to insulate their personal assets by putting them or parking them in offshore trusts and investment companies and they are probably their companies are defaulting on large loans taken from banks in india so you know you can cl- very clearly see this divergence so what i would say is when you move out your tax your you probably i wouldn't want to say siphon off or but you have huge assets millions of dollars parked outside and your companies are defaulting here there is something which is unusual which something which the tax man or the creditor needs to probe more deeply and about which he doesn't have information so clearly the rich are trying to hide certain things which the offshore structure allows yes on the second part of your question whether you know it does take away because you now india is a country it's a poor country large number right. of indians are poor the government needs tax resources for the development of the poor for health for education or for social welfare schemes so right. i think you know it, this is uh, this is kind of not letting the government get its due from the rich so i think it is grossly injustice we'll leave it there for the time being but thank you so much for joining us today p vedanathan ayer from the indian express